Hello there everybody, UXW Bill here again. This time I have a bit of a computer video for you all. What I've got on my hands is a bit of a problem. Fortunately I have a solution. See I've been making videos since late 2007 and over time I have saved every video that I have ever recorded across a multitude of different cameras, different editing platforms, you know the black MacBook, the PowerPC Mac Mini, and today the white MacBook as my iMovie editing station. I've even edited a couple of videos in Windows Movie Maker. But as you can imagine, storing all of the 260 some odd videos that I have made, plus a great many things that for some reason or another just kind of fell to the floor of the editing room, that takes up a lot of space. And I have been using my Linksys NSLU2, I've been using a number of external hard drives, and I have simply run out of storage space for the time being. Plus, it's no good idea to have all these movies spread across differing platforms and differing storage devices and things like that because in the face of a disaster, that's just kind of asking for it. So what I have here is the basis for a project. This is a Dell Dimension 8100 computer. It was uh, given to me. Guy phoned me up and there's everybody's favorite clock again. A guy phoned me up and said a buddy of his was throwing away two computers and if I wanted them I could come and get them. One was a uh, crapped out e-machine that is still awaiting its turn for some sort of interesting project. I've got to see whether or not the motherboard's still good because the power supply is shot and that usually kills the motherboard too unfortunately. But this, this thing works fine. And it's kind of ironic because um, at one time Dell knew how to build a computer, and for the Optiplex series machines, it seems that they still do. But the Studios and the Inspirons and things like that, they're just kind of cheap, and I'd say they're best avoided because they're putting things like best tech power supplies and very generic made in China motherboards in them and things like that. There's just no Dell in them anymore, and the design quality is nowhere near as good. This thing had a problem when I got it. I turned it on, I was testing it out. All of a sudden I started to hear that telltale whine of a switch mode power supply that was starting to have some trouble. Well, as it turns out, I had been sitting for several hours running, the power supply fan wasn't turning. Now, a lot of times, that kills a power supply, and it may have uh, imposed a hardship on the computer. But in this case, I relubricated the fan, I put it back in there, and I also inspected the power supply. I took a look at all the capacitors and everything, and at one time, they were putting high quality power supplies in these things. There's nothing wrong with this supply. There's not even a dark spot on the circuit boards. There's no bloated caps. There's no signs of duress. And usually, you know, usually the way you find out that you have a stalled power supply fan is because you begin to smell burning. Well, this thing was warm, but it wasn't dangerously hot. So I got it running again. When it was new, it shipped with everybody's favorite version of Windows, Windows 2000 Professional, which while it may not be everybody's favorite, you'll find a lot of people that'll tell you it was the best job Microsoft ever did on Windows. Anyway, I'm going to turn this thing into a video network attached storage device. I'm going to, we're going to be running FreeNAS yet again. And what I have done in preparation for this I've installed a four port USB card, two internal serial ATA ports, these little, uh, this is a VIA VT6421 based card. And the problem with these is, a lot of them have external facing serial ATA ports on them, but they're not proper external serial ATA ports. That's what this card down here is for. Now my first, my first phase of the plan here, let's go ahead and open this thing up. I'll have to set the camera down for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you what I've been up to here. That cardboard box over to the lower right, that actually contains uh, screws that hold the uh, one hard drive in the system. And um, so they're being kept so they won't get away. This is an early Pentium 4 system, socket 423, clocked at um, 1.5 gigahertz. It has a total of five PCI slots and one AGP slot. You can see my USB 2.0 card up here, the VIA serial ATA board, and then a silicon image based serial ATA board that only has external serial ATA ports on it. So those are the three boards that have been added to the system. 
I've also gone ahead and I added a serial ATA power connector. You can see how I've kind of hot wired that into the system's power supply wiring and I've got another one. The reasoning behind this uh, particular move here being that I needed an angled connector and I'll show you why in just a minute. The other one's just a conventional plug-on adapter and then there's another set of taps that are going back into the back of the system here and what are they going to? Well my first experiment with this was not at all successful. The old Vectra and its Intel PIIX PCI ISA IDE accelerator is what that stands for apparently had some problems with uh, CF cards as disks. Um, at first I thought that it was a problem with the operating mode of the card but in reality it seems that the free NAS or underlying free BSD in all honesty drivers have a problem with a device that uh, will not communicate using a DMA or direct memory access method when it's queried and at the time I couldn't find a compact flash card at a reasonable price that would communicate over ultra DMA so that was a complete non-starter and in the HP Vectra that was my first free NAS I just put an old hard drive in there and called it that I backed up the configuration since I did that the first drive failed but I have a big box of old hard drives to feed it with well time makes everything cheaper I guess because here is a Transcend 133X, or speed I suppose, 2 gigabyte compact flash card that supports Ultra DMA. Of course the Intel 810 and later chipsets seem to have solved whatever bug was bothering the 440 before it, as well as its PIIX, so those, those things definitely solved the problem and this machine boots FreeNAS perfectly from a CF card that's plugged into the primary parallel ATA channel. If you have an Optiplex GX400, you'll recognize a lot of the parts in here. I'm told that the Dimension 8100 is a fairly unusual machine, that not a lot of them were sold. And I tend to believe it because this is the only one I've seen offered anywhere for sale at any flea market or eBay auction or anything like that. This is the first one I've ever seen, whereas I have four or five Optiplex GX400s. And the interior, everything is basically identical. The only real difference is the Optiplex GX400 had business audio and so it had an amp on the motherboard and could have an optional little speaker up front that amplified both the PC speaker beeps and the system sound card noises. Well, what this angled serial ATA power connector for, and there's an angled data connector down here too, when this card adapter is in place, and I don't know if I can do this one-handed or not, but when this card adapter is in one place in its place, I'm sorry, when it's in its place the problem is it makes getting to the hard drive connection for the upper hard drive bay almost impossible. The only thing that will fit back there is angled connectors. Had I realized that I probably would have bought a different kind of CF card adapter but the deed was done and I didn't feel like shipping it back. The CF card needs a 5 volt tap to power the card as well as the simple step down voltage converter that's on the board itself other than that it's pretty well a passive adapter anyway what I'm going to do with this machine because storage is cheap these days I've just purchased two two terabyte one of them is a 5900 RPM Seagate the other is a 5400 RPM Samsung Eco Green spin point drive I'm going to put them in here and I'm going to use FreeNAS with its RAID 1 capabilities so that the data is being mirrored across both drives I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket and I'm not expecting RAID to save my bacon because a lot of times when you're going to rebuild a RAID array the other drive that still survives may come up with an unrecoverable read error. So that is what the USB connectors are on the back for. I intend to buy a third drive in the very near future that I will take and plug into this thing synchronize the contents of those using R-Sync and then I will take that drive off-site and put it into safe storage, probably a safe deposit box at the bank. The external serial ATA connectors down here are for future expansion because this system only has two internal hard drive bays and I don't know, you know, Dell usually underrates their power supplies. I think this one's rated for about 250 watts, so it's probably good for around 325 based on the way it's built inside. Anyway, 
Rather than trying to force this system to do something it really wasn't meant to do, when the time comes for more drives, and I don't think I'll come anywhere near to filling up the two terabytes because I'd say at most I've probably got, oh, maybe 600 gigabytes worth of video from all these cameras and videos that I've shot over the years. But when that time comes, I will hook up more serial ATA drives down here. This thing has onboard 3COM networking, which was a very high quality choice in its day. And luckily, although a lot of third-party non-Intel provided network adapters don't work well with FreeNAS, this onboard 3COM adapter seems to work beautifully. And since all my internal networking is 100 megabit anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use it. I don't have my drives yet. I may get them tomorrow. I don't know. But in the meantime, this is why you're not going to see a whole lot of videos from me until I can get this situation straightened out and get a little more free space on the MacBook's hard drive, which is probably the next thing that I'm going to upgrade, so I'm not always having to dump videos off of it. Anyway, I just thought you all might be interested in hearing about this computer project. So thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment.